<coughs> you should know the, um, the different types of cells that make up bone and what they do. You should know the microscopic makeup of bone. So if I were to put a diagram of bone on your test and ask you to identify the structures, you should be able to match that up. And if I were to do that, there would probably be a key on there as to what letters correspond to the numbers on the diagram. Get it? Follow the key. So if there are two letters that match up to the answer you want to choose, darken in both letters on the same line. So if the answer is AC, darken in A, darken in C on the same line. All right? Tough. I know sometimes that's a tough concept. Okay, but the Scantron will read it fine. There is a key. If I were to do this, there would probably be a key that identifies how to do that. Know your sutures and what bones they connect. Know what makes up a long bone, the structures of a long bone. The different types of growth of bone and cartilage. different categorizations of bone. How do we categorize bones? Short bones, long bones, flat bones, and so on. Um, the difference between yellow and red bone marrow. You should know all of the functions of the skeletal system. System. What kind of cartilage in the embryo produces bone? The coverings on bone and the different layers of the coverings on bone. a unit of compact bone to be able to identify what it's called. Compact bone. We talked about the feedback loops between bone breakdown and bone, um, bone deposit, making bone or breaking down bone. Know the hormonal controls of that system. What hormones cause what activity? What nutrients you need to eat in order to make bone? What's good for you to make bone? So you should know the, the matrix of bone, and the composition of the matrix of bone. Hormone makes bone grow. You know what? When I refer to trabeculae and diploe, be able to define these what these things are in these terms and where you find them. Diploe. Um, know the difference between what makes up your axial skeleton and your appendicular skeleton. Know the 
the bones that make up your coxal bones. Those are the bones that make up your cranial bones and your facial bones. Know how to identify cervical, thoracic, and lumbar vertebra from each other, and the and the and the individual vertebrae that are different in those regions. You should know what bone protects the pituitary gland. Which bones have paranasal sinuses? You should know your bones of the orbit. You know the curves in your spine, what they're called and where they are. talked about um, analogs, like the femur and the humerus are analogs to each other, the, the highest bone in those, that, that section of the body. So know what bone is an analog to another bone. Your carpal bone, you should be able to know what bone are in what row. Coverings on bone, both in the shaft and the end. Know what process takes place in red bone marrow. Know the foramen, like the foramen magnum, for instance, and where it is and what passes through it. Know the difference between true and false ribs. Know how to classify joints. Know the different types of joints. Adduction, abduction, inversion, eversion. You should have a fundamental understanding of what those movements are. Not those specifically, but all of them. Not just those specifically. Know the difference between a gomphosis, a synthesis, a syndesmosis, the terms I went over today and how to classify joints, you should have a fundamental understanding of. is versus a tendon sheet. What classifications of joints allow full movement versus no movement? And as far as the movements are concerned, I do have some questions about identifying, I'll uh, give you like X, Y, and Z are an example of this kind of movement. And you'll have different choices, flexion, extension, hyperextension, things like that. You should be able to know that, be able to identify that. Know the difference between the shoulder joint and the hip joint structurally, and how that works out as far as their function. You know the structure of a synovial joint. Um, there, in your book and also in the overheads, I had a picture of the upper extremity and had the different types of joints pointed out. 
um, like a hinge joint, and a pivot joint, and a, a saddle joint, a ball and socket joint. The reason why I use the upper extremity is probably the best example of all those different types of joints. You will probably see that picture again. And again, I showed you the picture of the synovial joint capsule. That picture you will probably see again as well. I have to identify structure. Your two essay questions. I already told you, you should really, really be familiar with why I teach you the skeletal system, its functions, and things like that. So you should be familiar with why you're taught the skeletal system in such detail. And you should also, there are two girdles in the body, you should know them really, really well, and how they differ in structure. Your test will be available for you first thing Monday morning. It will be available until Wednesday evening. You will have two hours to take this test. I will make sure that it is on the instruction sheet that you can write on the test. I don't care how much you want to write on these tests. They get shredded. Okay? So again, if it helps you, I will tell you on your scantrons, I would make sure that you record your answers on the test sheet first. And when you're sure that's the answer you want, only darken in that on the scantron. Um, there was a, a student came to me, and there were a couple of instances where she had erased an answer in favor of another answer. The scantron read both of them. Okay, and she, read, she lost points. Okay. So again, make sure 